Hey everyone, Shark here. Got a 2v2 for you today. Uh, so this one features a double DAC setup on the Axis side. It's Janko and Scotch, one of, if not the best, 2v2 teams out there. Playing against Dunkirk and J-Lodge with a mixed allied team who are no slouches themselves. Casting this one with me is uh, rather splendid Cromwell, which if you haven't seen his videos, check out the link below. They're awesome. Um, that's it. This one's super fun, and uh, let's get to it. All right. Hey, so we got the double DAC team here, Janko and Scotch. Janko's in blue. Uh, Scotch is in teal, right? They're on the north side of the map here in the default view. And then red is J Lodge playing as the Brits. And then purple is Dunkirk. Uh, with me casting this one as we watch these uh, Italian civilians in the middle of the, the map uh, is my boy, rather splendid Cromwell. Um, so first off, welcome. Second, uh, let's talk about big minds, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to be here. Is I the most splendid of Cromwells? And yeah, uh, I've just been just been trying to play co and trying to have some fun, trying to do some stuff that I didn't really was was realize was really in the game, and just try and make some memes out of it. Yeah, I I think I think it's proven now. If when people see your name in two v two, they just don't build vehicles. Yeah, um, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's very smart. Uh, the big mines cannot be triggered by infantry, so <laughs> it's a uh, that's a good move. Yeah, this is my first time casting on Pacino Farmlands in a minute. I've been doing a lot of stalemate, the the one v one version, um, mm -hmm. and it. I like the way that that's set up with the resources. This feels far more conventional with like the territory split through the middle. Obviously, you mm -hmm. got the big fuels on the flanks. Uh, yeah. And, uh, correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the biggest difference is that the center, the center resource points on the other side of the center VP are in the one v one. It's big munis, I think. And yeah. This one, it's fuel. Is yep. that right? Yep. And it, uh, it's much harder to achieve a cutoff in the two v two version of this map. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whereas that's that's a major component of the new uh, stalemate gameplay. So one of the other reasons that we chose this match to cast is it features two DAC players, and by and large. Um, you know, 1.8, DAC were really strong. They got a bunch of nerfs in 1.81, and so they, the consensus is they don't feel as effective anymore. Um, here over here with Jenko, you see him using the bike to get his combined arms bonus. He's got a second squad of Panzer Grenadiers coming out, uh, and then the bike with the, the Panzer Pioneers. So that's how he's managing that piece of it. And on the opposite side, uh, for Scotch, you see two Panzer Grenadiers, Panzer Pio, and a half track. So, Gotch feels like he's just going to wait here in these heavy cover positions, wait for the Brit to come to him. He has no desire to cast, and he doesn't need to. He has the VP. Oh. Meanwhile, the crowd shoots and gets gunned down by the uh, the Brit rifle units and the Dingo on chase. And it looks like yeah, Panzer Pioneer is going to retreat. So, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, the Brit infantry section is doing a lot of work. Good patience by Lodge to wait for that Dingo. On the opposite side, I think you called it. He was also waiting for that flamethrower to pop. And so now we're going to see his grenadier supported by uh, the clown car. One rifle squad mm -hmm. backs off. Get it. Yeah, and, and so here we go. So J Lodge is going to be able to push uh, Janko kind of all the way back. He's going to hop in the garrison, but they added this tree so that House can't just own the entire uh, field point over here. And then on the opposite flank, I find it hilarious that both teams are like uh, ignoring the middle of the map right now. Yeah, it's the, the polar opposite of what we used to see on this map. Yeah. Dunkirk, obviously tech grenades. He snares the 251, but it's going to be able to back up. Oh, the Dingo might try to... No, they're not going to chase this Panzer Grenadier because uh, a third squad is coming up. Oh. Really nice dingle play this game. He's been really smart with it. Yeah, the only downside, I mean, he picked up the crowd shoots in, but that squad of Panzer Grenadiers getting away only dropping a single model. Um, it's it's frustrating because the way you have to bleed DAC manpower, but it, it looks like for the most part, uh, both teams just really focused on fuel control early, which makes sense in 2v2s because those tech advantages really uh, snowball as the game goes on. 
Yeah, it, it would have been nice to see J-Lodge use the healing on the Dingo while in this kind of lull between the waves to get his troops up before the next wave. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he will, I don't know, there's a lot of half health infantry sections there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you see the DAC coming to the same conclusion, so they're getting a med truck out now. Uh, which is, it's pretty early. Uh, considering that we haven't seen many other units from them. Do you have a favorite uh, healing stopgap in this game? Uh, I will use the two five the two five zero because yeah. I normally get one of them out early. Um, but yeah, that's something that Dax was. Oh, nice use of the artillery. The artillery. Or is it the flares or the arc? It might have just been the flares. Either way, he forces oh. them out of that cover. And then he's going to push here. Oh no, it was the RD. It just came in really late with terrible scatter. Yeah, it would have been so <laughs> Chad if he just used the flares. I think I've ever ever seen anyone use it. I love it. That's like the ultimate... Uh, That's a, uh, you know, a Vico throwback. Yeah. But, so now it looks like Dunkirk. The, the allies have secured both fuels, so now they're rotating together into the center. Yeah, he's really dicking his infantry together. Uh, J-Lodge is just blobbing his sections around. Yeah, and you see Scotch is kind of keeping his Panzer Grenadiers together. I, this kind of makes sense. The DAC units fight better together, so they struggle when they're spread yeah. out. This is one of the more spread out 2v2 maps, but even now you see them, yeah, like these basically rifle platoons going face to face here. Sappers, yeah, yeah they, they come off repairs just in time. I think if he used the Dinkle heal earlier, he wouldn't be in such a dire situation right now. He's mm. really not healthy squads. Now, Dunkirk it, has a, an M1919 out, so he picked up the weapon support center as well. Mm. Seen. Yep. We got... Alright, Scotch is using the clown car to cap up this fuel. It's immediately going to find this, uh, this 30 cal machine gun. Which... Uh, they might need to upgrade the penetration on the 30 cal. <laughs> if the uh, if it can just shrug off, like a half track can shrug off a burst, yeah. but not rounds from Garands. Oh yeah. man, good thing uh, Janko had his uh, minesweeper. Mm -hmm. And it's the bane of my life when someone gets the minesweeper. Wow, Lodge already has a steward out. Wow, that's quick. Flock, Seven minutes. Flock track out as well. Flock track and steward. Yeah, and the flak track's gonna push this 30 cal away. And then I yeah. like this from uh, from Scotch. He's got his infantry kind of moving up through the center to support his vehicles on the wings. He, it's in a good spot to protect him from the Stuart. I'm sure he's seen it at this point on his teammate's screen. Rifles moving in on the flak for lane here on one side. The Stuart, oh, here's the Panzer Jaeger track, uh, mechanized group. I love oh, this. Oh, here we go. Do I have anything to support this trip? One section coming up. Put it. Benzie Eggers are going to hop out to continue to take shots. And that's going to force the Stuart to back up. Yeah, Stuart's been really unlucky with the shots and that little bit of elevation before the truck has just been smacked into that fence. Yeah. And now the 75 mil uh, half track out pushes the flag filling off so really good counter and now dunkirk's nice. choices make a lot of sense get the weapon support center go for the u.s half track build they're very Do you think get multiple? i think so you probably need two to be realistic especially yeah, if you're going to use that to skip the motor pool which it looks yeah, like he I, is yeah yeah i've been a big fan of doing this myself recently um ever since i saw aries do it i was like yeah this makes sense i'm gonna start copying this man Yeah, a second steward on the field. And Lodge also now getting out a six pounder. Looks I heard... like his chosen survival package over um command tank on his stewards. Okay. That way For the, the faster repairs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think they repaired themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh the the funk wagon here, so espionage battle group for Scotch. Black Rilling in the back, you gotta be careful, that 75 mil's there. Oh, it whiffs its first shot. Yeah. I, I, Dunkirk, Dunkirk's squads are really low. Does he have healing? Oh, he does. Okay. 
Yeah, he has it set up in the middle of the headquarters. Yeah, sharing it with the uh, with Lodge, which just is a little bit of extra micro, but it saves you your teammates some resources. Yeah, for sure, it's really helpful. Meanwhile, uh, I, Lodge making great progress on this side. Yeah, I suppose because he didn't have to invest the extra fuel into healing. That's how he got the sure attack so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could tell he just went right for it. Yeah. Ken Jaeger's getting some shots off. The six pounder, I guess, decided not to shoot. Um, but he's, there. he's doing a great job bleeding these Panzer Grenadiers with the Stuarts. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's trading trading the the HP of the Stuarts for the manpower of uh, Janko, which makes which is nice, I think, now, for against that. Invisible oh, that infantry mine? blob. Yeah, the Panzer Grenadiers hit a mine. The invisible infantry coming in now. And they're right on the flank. This is a great move. Mm -hmm. Focusing on the six pounder, uh, no, they're Kirk's gonna clear coming it. over a bit. It's gonna be too late. It's gonna be too late, especially because it's just infantry. Yeah, six pounder cleared again. Oh my goodness, what a push! Oh, he could tow with the 250 maybe just for the quick steal. Was he gonna do that's it? it? That's oh. what he's doing. <laughs> nice. he's stealing it. <laughs> oh no, he got a grenade on it, but it's gonna be okay. Uh, the, so, yeah. the 75 mil half track comes in, as well as a healing half track try to support, but instead, I think Dunkirk is going to end up basically throwing his infantry into the meat grinder here. Yep. The invisible Pgren's on the flank trying to repair the Funk Foggen. I mean, the, Let's go for a barrage here. Nice damage. Nice. Now the this, counter fire, uh... but the 30 cal's up. Oh, oh. no. Med oh. truck annihilated Med by truck. mine. Black filling on the flank though, willing away, but it's got to back up. And now the Stewarts can chase. Mm -hmm. Pack 38 uh, pulls up onto the field, but there's nothing here to snare it. Two Pack 38s. The Funk Fog is out of position. Oh, Stewarts get cold feet. Oh, attack around through the hedgerow just. Oh! <laughs> Wow, what the got stolen, the, the, sto the stolen six pounder, he's recruited. Well and he done. manages to snipe the Stuart. Black Furling getting chased down by the 75 mil half track. Panzer Pioneers in the center here. Wow. We have a garage for this building with the Panzer. The here it comes. I love this. Neither side wants to admit that they lost that engagement. So now <laughs> Brit's coming back, pushing hard. With the infantry section of the Stewart. Oh, could be. Could get the med truck here. Another med truck pickup would be huge. There yeah, it goes. And they could get the six pounder back. Yep, they're about to grab that. Oh. But the uh, pack 38 set up. It's fine. Oh man, this has been great so far. Yeah. I I am really impressed with the composure on the part of the allies there. I really thought mm -hmm. when that flank came over. That they were just going to get pinched and smashed, and instead, yeah. and and Dunkirk the whole time has been capping up the opposite side of the map, so they still have decent fuel control. The DAC players shoved into the center here. Oh, big DAC push middle. Yeah, but the camouflaged AT gun in the rear. Oh, never mind, it's popped out. So here's the M3. It's going to oh, take a shot. M3, uh, the 38's set up. Yep. 30 cal's doing some work. Yeah. Great, great positioning the machine gun to constantly throw these engagements. Good dodge by the uh, Dunkirk on the grenade. Black for link. Yeah, it gets the AoE suppression. So even though that rifle squad is in is in green cover, it gets suppressed. Now J Lodge, he's teching Grants and he's getting foot guards out. So foot guards, <laughs> yeah. My boys, my Scottish boys. Oh, the dodge not complete. A couple of grins go down to that gammon bomb. Mm -hmm. He actually threw it the back door, expecting mm -hmm. to leave it back, but he left it at the front, so he came off better mm -hmm. uh, by doing that. That's quite clever. I think that uh, from Tight Rub's videos, that's the damage all in hold mm -hmm. uh, quality of the grenade. So as long as it hits some part of the structure, it gets does damage to everything. Yeah. Uh, our second co-caster is my lovely Belgian Malinois, Kenny, uh, who you may or may not be able to hear. She'll definitely be in the video, <laughs> based on the mic settings. 
Oh, oh yeah, are those the ones that can like climb trees and stuff? Uh, some can. She's a, uh, she's a little bit on the bigger side. Okay. <laughs> but she she can <laughs> she can jump a six foot fence, which is kind of nuts. Wow. Yeah. Here we go. All right, now another push here, and I think, you know, J Lodge's strategy. Oh, that's a Grant. So he says, screw Stewarts. We're gonna roll with Grants, and that's early. Mm -hmm. Fifteen minutes for a Grant on the field. I think they're gonna make this game about that, uh, this fuel point, right? They want to own both of the fuels. Did 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 he refund his other Stuart? I, I think sorry, so. I didn't see that. I think okay, so. Cool. Yep. Let me see. The recon. Or what is this? The uh, anti-infantry lawyer. Anti-infantry strength. Yeah. yeah. Flax making short work of it. Oh, this uh. Huge infantry push. I was gonna say infantry section almost goes down. Oh, nice gamble yeah. bomb. Oh. Nice. A ton of damage. And now with the grant in the back, the pack 38 sets up though. If I'm him, I'm worried about the flank, the flank shot from Scotch. Same. Oof. Grant's lucky there. Yeah. Grant's gonna back up. Um, Scotch has unlocked the incendiary AT munitions as well, so every one of those shots from a pack 38 is gonna do long-term damage. Man, and you see it on the half track. Yeah. Oh, he backs up. Not in time. Oh, no, no, the poor half track. I was just about to start praising the half track. I'm glad yeah. I never. Uh, the gamma bombs are just a little bit harder to dodge than the regular grenades, so foot guards still picking up a couple of kills. Yeah, they were just down to one Thompson model there. Oh, zero Thompson models now, so they yeah. weren't doing that that DPS that we'd expect them to. Look at this! Thing with look at this garrison play here in the center from Scotch, and the Panzer mm -hmm. Grenadiers just doing a ton of work, all yeah. upgraded with these uh, light machine guns. Now we I'm see. Not, Go ahead. This is the, probably, this is probably the one thing I dislike about. Pacino stalemate is the, the all these buildings in the middle. I, I, I find because their their distribution is uneven. I feel like the there's sort of a, there's an advantageous side if you know what I mean. Yes. When there's so many available structures to garrison on one side. Yeah, I go back and forth. Like I'm okay with maps not being perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not command and conquer. I get that. Yeah. But um, it just, it just annoys me sometimes. Yeah, and I think that the garrison. Oh my gosh, this rifle squad barely gets away. Wow. Yeah. Um, the garrison mechanics, just because they, I played so much Co. Two, and they work differently, and it so it still blows yep. my mind sometimes. Uh, the allies now have both fuels. And so. Should be grants on grants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe, the Funkwagen with the uh, the DAC, big mine. That'd be oh. uh, good for uh, punishing some of these grant pushes. Yeah, well, what is the... It's, that's the Funk Wagon, right? It places yeah. the big mine. What's yeah. the place? Is it a Tyler or a Regal? Uh, I can't remember which one. Functionally yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah, I think the Regal maybe does more damage. Or I guess... Yeah, but I think it's functionally the same thing. Oh, Funk Wagon takes around two. And here's the second grant, and then... Oh, look at this push. Beautiful. Also, really impressed. Despite this, Jenko's immediately capping up that fuel on the flank now that uh, Lodge oh. is vacated. See. Good flank. The 2 5 oh, gets knocked out. Penziegas are here. The 6 pounder may get cleared. It does. Wow. What do you think Axis needs to do to break this um, the strong Grant presence in the middle? I think, honestly, if they pin them here in the middle and then use the AT guns. Uh, kind of oh, on the, the flank. Run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, the foot guards are still now. This is oh my goodness. Oh wow. I think he used the vet one on the foot guards there to keep that P3 in place for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the two the grants. Yeah. The the 37 mil gun on the grant probably needs a penetration nerf. Like, realistically, you're not. You shouldn't be penetrating the front armor of tanks with the little guy. Yeah. Oh, it's just an RNG thing, right? It just happens like occasionally. Is that, is that the idea? Um, yeah, but I think it's set a little too high. They wanted to make it viable against light vehicles. Yeah. Uh, but then what happened is it, they just made it too, too powerful. Too viable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another six pounder right. cleared in the center. These incendiary AT munitions, um, 
are really, really valuable in this context against the Grimps because it's that long-term damage. Oh, wow. Even though this P3 is clearly outside the radius, it still takes a strafe. <laughs> the guys repair that take a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, no, damage is right. Oh. Uh, I don't want to belabor this. We've been over the skill planes later so much <laughs> on this channel. Yeah, I know. I know it doesn't matter a bit. It's to so, me, I, it's so the frustrating. Inside of the circle is one part, and the outside of the circle is the other. You can't, you can't tell me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So we're seeing the 76 mil Shermans. All right. So that's going to be the allies. Only. Oh my gosh. If he just pushed a little bit. Oh, nice then, yeah. 76, sorry. It, it, yeah. The only, the real difference, I think the easy 8 has a slight health bonus and then gets an accuracy yeah. on the move bonus, but that 76 mil cannon, really helpful in the late game against his Axis armor. Oh, no. Oh. Scouts get annihilated. I saw that, yeah. Nice double team from the P3 and, flag. And this infantry section smoked as well. The DAC Panzer are going to do starting to scale, combined with they the are. mobility of the P3s. Yeah. So the Axis can... Go for it. Sorry. I was going to say that Panzer Grenadiers are late game monsters, man. Once they have the MGs and all the upgrades, they're just, they are a formidable force. They kind of feel like almost like O2 Grenadiers on, on like, I don't know, Acid or something. Or like, uh, like Obersadalton with two extra models and an anti tank snare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fierce, man. It's fierce. Yeah. Um, especially with the combined arms bonus, because by the end of the game, you almost certainly always have vehicles around. Um, here's a big push through the middle. Nice Ooh, shot, the six rounder. Yeah, thirty cal gets away. The double grants here. I think. I mean, honestly, this is the answer to the P grant spam. Is multiple yeah. grants. J Lodge yeah, left sure. loading quite a bit of fuel, so I wonder what he's going to go with. Seventy six mil Shermans are going to push over. Scotch is trying to counter cap on VPs. Oh, the Sapper Squad may go down here. Yeah, yeah lost seen. in the center. Yeah, he's too busy marking on this uh, south side. Yeah, and Dunkirk, the M4s with rifles, more than enough to take on the east side VP. And now J Lodge pushing back on the west side here. I think that was a smart relocation. They wanted to avoid. Oh. oh. This grunt. Ooh. Wow. I think the. Am I right in thinking that these P grants get a. They do. Uh, after their grenades? They do. Uh, wow, I, thought, um, I think that was really clutch. There. It's also the the AT munitions become special uh, incendiary AT grenades. Ah. Just like with the Pack 38. Look at these Shermans actually in a little bit of trouble. Yep. All right, so, <laughs> wow. A lot, a lot of chat about these loiters. <laughs> yeah, that, that three flak throwing. <laughs> Blackfilling says, yeah. uh, that's cool that you have airplanes, but not anymore. Yeah, he's done a really good job keeping it alive. It's a huge asset. And I think, honestly, better now for him to leave it in the rear. Yeah. In a spot where he can cancel that recon already. For sure. I assume that's what that was. I see the repair station. Um, yeah, J Lodge, actually, his army composition kind of hurting right now. He's tons of resources. Oh, he's got to be a Black Prince. That's the only thing that makes sense at this stage. Oh, shoot. God, a, a Black Prince game. Okay. I mean, it, you know, when you bet it up, it's a beast if you bet it up. If. Yeah. But I, with that, those AT munitions are the perfect counter for oh, it. Oh, yeah, true. Walking right into that, that trap. Mm -hmm. And you see P3 is running down all. Another infantry section may go down here. One Grant. I see him. And a six pounder, or Pack 38, really, still in Pack 38 to counter. So it's going to get away. Foot guards there to support. So good counter punch from J Lodge on the opposite side. Oh man, this M4A1, the 76, getting pushed on three pack 38s now. Oh, I don't think they can catch up. Yeah, he's got cold feet. Yeah, and it and supported by his own AT gun. Some wise cold feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100%. J-Lodge just needs one more command point for the Black Prince. 
Well, so we see Janko's going for lots of P3s, and his Panzer Grenadiers to manage the AT gun threat. Ooh, one snare onto the uh, M41, another snare coming on with a hit in time. Engine Ooh, critted. In oh, it's oh, dead. It's dead. It's done. Packard volley comes Au in. Au revoir, mon ami. Yeah. Man, so the Axis, despite. Uh, oh, man, the colors are so messed up on this map, I just realized. Or on the, <laughs> the counter up top. Um, yeah. Is it? I, I'm so confused by this overlay right now. Okay, so we've got... Yeah, so they're behind on VPs. Yeah, the Axis, yeah. Yeah. Behind on, yeah. I'm sorry. You got, everyone just watched me, like, my brain just do backflips <laughs> uh, in real time. So three P3s for Jenko. I, I mean, the mobility here, especially as he starts to get through the upgrades, is going to be really useful. With only one M4 on the field for Dunkirk. He's got a nice army composition, but not a lot of armor. Oh yeah. my gosh, these rifles just getting burned down by the invisible infantry. Yeah, Scotch's um, tactics are brutal. Here. The that espionage battle group just so good. All right, yeah. here comes the... Uh, oh my goodness, yeah, P3s. Go for the Grants and the Black Prince here as well. Wow, what a huge push. They're trying to collapse this pocket. Perfectly timed with the loiter. Rifle squad almost goes down. Foot guards getting burned down. There's an AT gun in the back, but three pack 38s. Yeah. Firing through the hedgerow. Man. Combine this Black with the armor support loiter. Yeah. Black Prince is stranded on the other side of the lawyer, unable to come and help in the middle. Yeah. Now, recon already coming in, but the flak filling's there to do away with those airplanes. And so, the pack 38s forced to back up, but they're not going to take much damage. Uh, now the Black Prince re-entering the loiter. But they are... It is complete. So now the Black Prince can move in unabated. I am really interested to see how this thing fares against those uh, uh, pack 38s I, with the incendiary munitions. <laughs> As much as I, you know, lo love the Brits, I just feel like I don't have a lot of hope for this Black Prince. I don't have a lot of hope for him, man. Especially now that they're camouflaged, and I don't know, I think these incendiary munitions are just going to burn right through it. Well, so but Dunkirk is, I think he's figured something out. He's got a whiz bang coming out, and like, I'm looking oh. at this very juicy target here in the center. That's true. They've been really bad doing this all, all game, is in this little choke point, just mm -hmm. hanging out. Mm -hmm. Um... But the Axe is going to keep the pressure on. They've got two of the three VPs now capping up the uh, allied pool here. Black I have a question, actually. Uh, yeah, go for do, it. Do the special op flares reveal the camouflage units? Yes, they do. And they provide an accuracy bonus against infantry. Okay, maybe that's his play. Pop the flares, get the whizbang target, you know? Yeah. And, and then push at the same time. It makes sense. I Yeah, the second grant out, I think they need to continue to push grants to support this Black Prince. Let the Black Prince focus on the vehicles because it does twice as much damage uh, per shot as other tanks. It does 240. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, here come the Pack 38s, camouflaged, and the rifles are going to force them to move back. So a good, timely push from Dunkirk. Wizbang must be thinking about it, surely. Yeah. There's a couple of uh, Pack 38 shots. Only one penetrates, but it's enough to start the, uh, the burn. Here come yep. the incendiary Oh grenades. no, this is the nightmare, this is the nightmare, this is the nightmare. It's critted, and now you see the P3 train on the flank coming in. Whizbang, activate. It's doing it, it's doing it. Yeah, so the Whizbang will hold off Scotch, but now these P3s coming in hunting for... Oh, they're gonna find the Grant here, oh, and no. be on the Black Prince. Oh, the Vet 3 Grant in the back is in good position to support. True, true. Uh, so One P3 goes down. Oh, both P3s, they might pick up, they pick oh. up a Grant. Holy moly, the food guard's in close range, doing a lot of damage here. Oh no, more snares. More snares. And the Black Prince goes down to, what, like seven oh. snares? It was a tragedy. Panzer Grenadiers are going to get out. Now, you see Scotch pushing in with his invisible horde on the other flank. The allies are recuperating. They survived the initial push with just one Grant. Here's a 76 mil, pack 38s all setting up. Oh, One, two, no. three. Oh, that's done. RIP, comrade. Oh, 
Oh, shot through the headroach to finish it. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, man. He's got another one, and he's got the whiz bang there. There's something about seeing pack guns walking around a blob and just getting away with it. It just drives me, like, insane. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all three of them on top of each other. They set up volley yeah. fire. And... Just keeps getting away with it. <laughs> so, yet another Panzer three coming out for Janko. What are we on? Like, is this like the eighth Panzer three? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I feel like there's been so many. And he's not hurting for fuel. The standard DAC problem is just manpower. They're blowing up the vehicle wrecks to prevent uh, the Stop plunder. It. Yeah. Uh, Grant smart. tangling with Panzer Jaegers. All right, they're they're pushed off as they should be. Oh, on the retreat path, gammon bomb, oh, nice pickup. Just beautiful. But now we see the counter push from Scotch here in the center. Oh, sugar. Oh, well, nice. He's oh. using the uh, faster rate of fire on the eight, six pounder, and they get up, they get the pickup. That was really nice. Oh, nice here it is. Here's little, the whiz bang right onto the pack oh. 38s. Please, please. One cleared. That's something. It's something. It's something. Oh, but the other two are going to come in. Now we see the uh, anti-infantry strafe. The Sherman's going to get away. Grant comes in. All the pack 38s are cleared. Yes, thank you. These P Grants in the middle just dying. There's justice. There's some justice in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Panzer three coming in on the flank. This Vet yeah, 3 Grant is potentially going to go down here. Sherman's trying to support, but can't commit. Oh, man. P3 goes down, but oh. uh, anti tank grenade is going to come in, knock out the Grant. The, the, he used the Vet 1 on the foot guards again uh, on that P3 to secure the kill, like to keep it in place. It was really nice. These guards have done a lot of work. They are. But the, right now, yeah, they're down to just bazookas so they have to back up. Yeah, that's the thing. <clears throat> now, that's the thing with these weird hybrid units with the way the models drop. Mm -hmm. you know? That's, I mean, really, that's the counter to foot guards is you <laughs> knock out their <laughs> models with the Thompsons. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. We have command points awaiting assignment. Somehow, the allies come away from that command with two of the VPs. They're a little bit down on fuel control right now, but uh, which is actually a problem for them. Uh, larger problem, though, Scotch has a tiger out. Oh, sugar. And there is, they just spent all that time knocking out <laughs> those spare AT guns in the middle. They may live oh, to no. regret that. I saw, so. I saw the six pounder digging in, and then the sandbags went away, so I'm not really sure what happened. Another grant out for J Lodge. The six pounder's been recruited by the American. Um, no, wait, is it? No, never mind. That's a different six pounder. No, that is the same six pounder. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now we've got the oh. firestorm coming in on those AT guns and MG. So forcing Dunkirk back. So it looks like J Lodge is going to collapse into the center here to try to help his teammate. J Lodge with his four units. I love yeah. it. Yeah. All high impact units, foot guards, yeah. Grant. They really can't tangle. They're doing some damage to the Tiger, but they can't push to the middle because of the firestorm. Yeah. And now here comes the flank again from Janko. Yep. The, uh, Ooh, man. The guards are really low. There we go. The rifles could go down here if they get too greedy. They're going to throw the snare. And Tiger's it won't, here from the north. It won't enter crit. Rifles go down. Gamma bomb does Ooh. work. Oh, beautiful. Tiger's going to lean back in here into the center. This I like this six pounder position with the, the brace. Yeah. Or in place. He, he fires, smart. fires faster with the brace. Yeah, it takes less damage too. It's that's smart. It's cool. You don't, you don't see a lot of people using it, so it's nice. Yeah. Interestingly enough, so Scotch going with the advanced field repairs uh, upgrade. I like that. I mean, I think that you know now this Tiger's gonna be back at full health in a couple of seconds here with all these Panzer Grenadier squads repairing it. Triple cap. The Axis have the triple cap. Yeah. Well, here's a couple of shots in on the tiger, but it shrugs them off. And now here come again the hordes of DAC infantry. 
This AT gun is done. Oh, they used their alpha strike, plus the tiger. Poor rifle squad just annihilated. Oh. Whizbang to counter. Forces the Pentagrenadiers back, but only gets one model. The enemy has taken a victory point. Yeah, it's quite... The, the Whizbang... The way he's using the Whizbang, I just don't think is working. There's no more stationary things for him to shoot at. Yeah, he's struggling. I think he's got to try to reach for that med truck and the funk wagon, or to use it to deny like a territory cap. Guys, we're gonna just clear that AT gun. Allies rotating over to the west side. They, yeah, they're trying to alleviate this triple cap. This rifle squad's done. Oh man, just too much now. Yeah, the the actions have just done a much better job at preserving their infantry. Like all their all these mainline grenadiers, Vet three. You know, just doing phenomenal work. Yeah, now a Tiger coming in on the flank with the AT gun. Oh, oh the Sherman's gone. Whizbang caught out of position. Six pounder to support, but that's not gonna. The Whizbang's not gonna, not gonna survive. Grant with taking a long pushing. time. They're taking a long time to rack this Tiger. It's gonna be devastating. Another firestorm. Well, the Whizbang gets away. And actually. Janko loses a P Grand squad. Bookguard still tangling with the P3s here. So they've stopped with a triple cap bleed, but at this point the tiger's sitting on that central VP. <laughs> yeah, and the ally is now fuel starved. Oh man, look at all those Pentagon Deers. Wow. The for Alpha Strike on that machine gun. They don't even front of the crew. bother yeah. getting suppressed. He doesn't even can be suppressed. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> oh. Invincible. Good volleys coming in from the Grant and the Sherman, yeah. and they lose a lot of models. But it doesn't look like they're going to actually. Oh. Do you remember in Code 2 when the planes would yes. crash and murder your units? <laughs> I, yes. Because <laughs> the uh, they used to time in the smoke, the Suga smoke strike, so that the plane would be shot down. They'd, they'd aim it. They'd try to predict where it'd be shot down to knock out like <laughs> the enemy infantry. It used to really bother me. I'm glad they patched that out. I mean, it makes for some really cinematic moments, but uh, yeah. kind of game-breaking. <laughs> yeah. And, and heartbreaking. Oh! Oh! Nice mine. It's critted. Nice barrage here onto the Tiger getting repaired. This is exactly what we thought they should do. And the Pack 38 in the rear. Now, Sherman's into support, so the Wizarding's not really. Oh, no. Here comes the anti armor loader. Look at all these units clustered up in the center. P3 oh, on no. Flank. Oh, one Sherman down. Oh, it's tragic. Oh, he caught him just bundled up there. Oh, oh, yeah, skill Both points. of the Shermans go down. Tiger oh, pushing. The, the Wizman has heavy engine damage. That means that means they placed a, a big a mine. mine. The big mine. The big right, mine. I'm, and I'm, it's I'm, all smoked. Foot guards right. annihilated. Oh, right, man. I, I think I, this might be it. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. I've changed my mind. Janko's the man for placing the big mine. <laughs> He's my, I'm now an advocate for Janko. Or Scotch. Scotch. Yeah, it Scotch. had to have been him. Grant knocked yeah. out. Lutch says, hmm. Oh, more artillery Oh my goodness, that was such it. a game. Holy crap. Well, well, that's how you play a double deck, I guess. Yeah. You know, I think it was uh, the Allies game to lose and they lost it. All right, everyone. So we're back. And uh, and Cromwell, what do you got? What what are your biggest takeaways from this? For me, Shockman, it's it's the unit preservation. The, the Axis and their their willingness or their their ability to to keep their main lines alive their their grenadiers just manages to carry them through the game mm -hmm. their the, the lethality the late game lethality of the panzer grenadiers their ability to repair that tiger to 100 hp on the middle vp at like minute 36 or something just like yeah uh just kept them in the game kept them kept them on top of the allies obviously loiters loiters were a really big part of this game the constant recon the constant anti infantry strafes the uh the uh, the the Dak Voider just all mm -hmm. the time keeping the flak alive at the back so he can shoot down the because the allies didn't have any AA you know they had zero AA could have seen a nice Polston from um, uh, the Brit or we could have seen a nice AA because he went weapon support center he could have got a half track you know while yeah. he was building them 
Yeah. Um, such a big, big part of 2v2 these days is the, the loiters, and it would have been nice to see a bit of anti loiter play from the allies. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think you nailed it. I, when I think about kind of the strengths of DAC as a faction, right? The, the Panzer Grenadiers, they kind of they can suffer early, but as they scale, we talked about it, they get the machine gun, they get the sixth man, they get their veterancy, and suddenly they're, they're just Terminators. Um, you combine it with the, the battlefield espionage, like the invisible movement, the alpha strike, frontally clearing machine guns, and then the anti-tank uh, incendiary munitions. I mean, they so Janko and Scotch, I think, did a really good job of, of parrying their play style of the DAC to each other. And you could kind of see it in the chat. I, I was trying not to call it out during the cast, but they were talking <laughs> back and forth. Like, hey, you do this, I'll do that. What essentially came down to is like you got the um the incendiary AT munitions. So having Scotch focus on pack 38s, which just I mean, so much lasting damage to the Allied tanks, which uh I mean Allied tanks are fine, but they have less armor, so they're more likely to get penetrated. So that you're gonna max out the damage profile from those. Um yeah. and then using the mobility from Janko with the P3s and the armored support and upgrades there. I think after a while. Um, like you said, that like as we were closing out the game, you're like this was the allies' game to lose. They did such a good job early, but they weren't able to bleed the DAC players enough to prevent a lot of those upgrades. And then mm-hmm. over time, they just started to lose units. The unit preservation piece came in, um, and it just got rougher and rougher for them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that. Also, <laughs> go ahead. Also, it's, I think I almost forgot that he built a Black Prince because uh, I forgot that even happened. Like when you saw the tiger you know that feeling you get when you see the tiger mm-hmm. you're like oh mm-hmm. you're like oh shoot when you see the black prince you don't really have that feeling you're kind of just like oh no it's a black prince like why has he done that <laughs> yeah. but you know it, it was such a strange when you called it i was like there's no way that's what he's gonna do that'd be insane and then he did it and i was like oh no <laughs> why has he so, done that <laughs> so let's so let's talk let's talk about that right like okay the black prince it's in theory mm-hmm. he he did it right he had two grants on the field he had infantry they're looking to close out the game, right? Yeah. So that is like, rather than being like, oh God, I'm about to lose. Let me get a Black Prince out. Like this is, this is the tool that I need. Um, so going back, let's say you're going to, you have that army composition. You're going to get the Black Prince out. Like how would you use it differently um, I, to try uh, to impact the game? I probably just wouldn't put it anywhere near the center because of the way he's using the cloaked AT guns. Mm-hmm. I'd probably use it on the flank. But mm-hmm. I just I just feel so nervous about building it because of the incendiary munitions. I just feel like it's like, you know, the kryptonite of the Black Prince. Uh yeah. I just I just I just not feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. And, and it's got and it's got all of his Panzer Grenadiers alive with their bonus grenade as well. I just oh it's just like a, it just fills me with anxiety thinking about building the Black Prince, to be honest with you. Yeah, so it almost makes me think that maybe the allies had their kind of strategy flip flop because you basically yeah. had the Americans who were supposed to be the more dynamic, aggressive faction in mm-hmm. the center trying to hold and you had the Brits uh, on the flank or trying to be the kind of the, the hammer, right? Mm-hmm. And so maybe I think this is, you know, hindsight being 2020 and these guys are obviously way better than I am, but if you take the Black Prince and those grants and you focus instead on kind of that Western flank and you say, I'm just going to lean on this VP and the Axis fuel for the rest of the game and, and keep it here and then allow the American to flex back and forth, you basically yeah. force the Axis to roll into the meat grinder that is a Black Prince supported by grants. Um, yeah, true. That's the only real thing I can think of because I think you're exactly right. Having yeah. the Black they- Prince in the middle of that town is just... You're just asking Bad for to get annihilated. Yeah. Uh, also, um, they, they could have made it work because they had the whiz bang. They had that sort of the, the anti um, anti tank gun blob sorted. You know, if they just got that whiz bang off, it could have mm-hmm. all come together, but it just didn't. Also, speaking of the whiz bang, shout out to the flunk Panzer wagon and the big mind. You made me really emotional, made me really happy inside. So, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we could see that. <laughs> oh man, they just the engine destroyed crit. You gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize it was a big mine until I saw. I thought it retreated back to base, and I realized it was still there because it just couldn't move. <laughs> it was just like, like t- moving at like five percent or something, ten percent movement. It was just, just a wreck. Yeah, and then the only other thing I can think of for the for the Americans here, right? He leaned on the seventy six mil Shermans, which normally I'm a big fan of. I like to do the same kind of the same thing. I wonder because uh, Scotch really didn't have much in the way of vehicles, if like a couple of dozers would have been better 
right? Mm. You, mm. you start to really beat up on those P grins. You start to knock out AT guns. Um, you can always yeah. get Hellcats or, you know, for anti tank. Um, but the, and the those are a little more durable as well. Uh, cause the, the 76 is, I think they still have the, uh, the model damage cap. Um, so even if they land a shot right on the P grand squads are only going to damage two or three of the models at a time. And so you're not going to get the big hits, the big wipes that you need to really impose costs on the DAC mm-hmm. players. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what the play is for the Americans there. Maybe that is it. I think when you're trading with the uh, incendiary munitions though, it's like, it's like big blow versus big blow if you've got dozers it's like mm-hmm. obviously you're getting big hits on the weapons crew but they're getting big hits when you return it's sort of like a you know it's i guess it's yeah a little bit comes in just execution at that point yeah. right yeah 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 exactly yeah it's 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 doable for sure yeah well uh, maybe with them maybe with the smoke plays and and special ops you could do something like that with attack round with the dozers you know oh uh, yeah I like that. try and get the try and get the upper play the upper hand rather yeah um you got anything else no that's me shark dude i really appreciate you coming on this is a lot of fun what a what a game man what a game (laughs) all right well appreciate you that's going to be it for us guys and uh catch y'all in the next one